like to welcome you to the BSE America location here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm Pete Hauser. We went ahead and we are doing a complete list as far as what materials you need to properly set your tools. We we're also gonna go ahead and find exactly how you take those measurements, how you upload those into the software on both the CAM software and the CNC itself. Then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start making a footprint. With that footprint, it's gonna show us how we have to adjust those tools up or down. And we're also gonna go ahead and show you how to put those polishers in properly without overpressure. Once we get those footprints created, we're gonna go ahead and show you exactly those quality edges. So how you can maintain those edges as well. Then we're going to take some time and actually do an evaluation of a time study, how you can do a time study so you can figure out exactly how much that machine can produce for you. All right, to continue on, we just went ahead and we've got our core bit put in and now we're going to go ahead and set that, uh, the power edge or the Super Z. We're going to switch over. I'm going to leave that as a mill cutter as well. And we're going to put that as 80 millimeter. Let's put it as a power edge. Our overall height, we're just gonna put that at 50. One important part too is as we put this data in, our feed rate is in millimeters in here. So make sure that's very, very clear understanding if you're putting in millimeters or if you're putting in inches. So the rotation on this, I'm gonna put at 6,500. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start with our tooling. Uh, if you want there, you might want a T33 and an 80 millimeter. Uh, everybody's going to be a little bit different on how you want to describe that. You could do a P1-D, so that way you know that that is a diamond. Our feed rate, we're going to go ahead and set that at 79 or 7600, which is 300 inches a minute. Leave our rotation the same. Now we're just going to go ahead and update one by one. position six you have the option to go ahead and set it up as a diamond which is going to go point to point however on an intermac machine you have an option you can set it up actually as a polisher what that means is it's going to go ahead and read on the machine what the adaptive thrust is or what the amp draw is on the machine so what happens is that tool is going to come into pressure or come into contact with the the material itself and it'll evaluate what its diameter is and as the diameter reduces it will come in more so that way you have a constant pressure from the start to the beginning or start to the finish. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this to a polisher. If you wanted to leave it set up as a diamond you can and then you just have to manually adjust it on the fly. So I'm going to go ahead and put our feed rate for this particular tool we're going to put it at 1500 to start and our RPM I want to set at uh, 2800 position 7 and the same for that. So now that we've got the tool setting up here on this screen, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to power up the machine so we can start inputting that data into the machine itself. So as the machine's starting up, I'm going to also go ahead and create what's called a sequence. All right? So after we put in all the tools, we still have to create a sequence that those tools are going to work within. I'm going to create a brand new sequence, which is going to be the T33R3FLX series power edge. And then I'm going to go the T33R3, and I'm going to do P1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So I know exactly what that sequence is. I'm gonna go ahead and start off with a mill, which is gonna be our power edge. I'm gonna come in at a slight radius, about 45 degree angle. This data should automatically upload, so if you see the rotation and the feed rates, it's automatically placing that into here. So my depth of machine, how far down do I wanna go ahead and put that, uh, bring that tool down? I'm gonna go ahead and say, we're dealing with 30, 30 millimeter material right now, so I'm gonna set that at 30 mil how much material we're starting over with. So it's very, very important at the very beginning to understand how much material you're leaving left over from your saw. So if you think of, you need to leave material to remove when it gets to the CNC. So it's important to try and leave a 16th inch, if not more, depending on how you're setting up the machine and setting up the tools or setting up the pieces on the machine itself. So I highly suggest if you're doing a 16th inch is, uh, bear is probably about one of the better spots you can be 
so that way your tools are not having to work as hard so you're going to get a little bit longer life out of them. If you are putting them at a half inch or a quarter inch of over material, just think of it this way, your machine's going to have to remove more of that material now. It's going to run at lower feed rates and you're putting to put more wear and tear on your tool and the machine itself. So if we can, we want to say we want one millimeter of over material or if you say you've got two millimeter over material so two millimeter over material will give us one millimeter to remove with that power edge and that'll leave one millimeter to remove with the rest of the sequence from there on out so now we have to go ahead and add our next tool in we'll insert that here now we're going to go to our position one once again i'm going to change this to 45 my start over material is one and for this particular one, I want to remove 0.4 mil. So my radial step is going to change to 0.4 mil, 0 0.05, 0 0.05, and we're going to remove no material after that. On those tools, we just went ahead and set up from our power edge all the way down to the polish for that T33. And we'll do some other programs on how you can test your diameter of your core bit, blind hole, and drill bit as well. Now we have our sequence already created inside of here which we can see that T33R3 Flex Series. We can get into the programming aspect of where our piece is, how we're gonna lay that out, and then we're gonna go ahead and go to the machine and actually do some testing to see how these tools are lined up. Okay, so as we were creating all the tools, we went ahead and we created a uh, tool code. So that tool code is extremely important for us to go ahead and write that down for each one. So that way, when we're uploading that information to the CNC, those tool codes are how they identify each other properly. So one of the things that we have to do is we have to upload our tool information. So here we're going to go ahead and get back to the, the data. So we have first our drill bits, our core bits as well. So let's put in our blind hole drill and our vertical offset. So if I want, I can go ahead and put our vertical offset below the stone. So right now, as I bring this in, it's going to come to just the base. So this bottom point is going to come to the lowest point of the stone, which is the pod. I may want to offset that down ever so slightly. So on this instance, this diamond is 45 millimeter long. Our stone is 30 millimeter. So we may want to go ahead and say one millimeter below. So this is going to drop down one millimeter. So that way it cuts all the way through the stone without any issues. So I can put a negative offset of negative one. I also want to go ahead and add in my power edge now we've got all those diamonds set up. Now we're gonna go ahead and put in the polishers on the other side. Typically what I like to do is increase that diameter ever so slightly at the beginning. So we may go ahead and let's increase that diameter by 0.5. So we're gonna make it 60.09. All right, our height is at 52.4. Our vertical offset, we're not going to put one in and we're gonna put our max rotation. Let's set our max rotation at 3000. Okay, now we have all the tools put in the machine. Next thing up is we're gonna go ahead and we're going to identify the piece. So we're gonna create a footprint. So another nice feature that we have here with Intermac is we can actually go ahead and put in a tool that's gonna go ahead and scan that so we can upload that drawing. Typically what I would do uh, if we don't have this option is we'd go ahead and in the cam software, we'd go ahead and draw that piece. So we may want to go ahead and take dimensions of the piece, place it, utilize pin stops, or utilize an overhead projector to get that piece located properly. And then we're going to go ahead and program a footprint. The footprint is the key to the success of setting up tools and also maintaining and creating that process so you can ensure, assure that the quality coming off the machine is a of finished quality so you're not touching up by hand everybody knows once it comes off the machine if you have to go put it up on the table to fabricate you're not only losing time and money but the opportunity for that to get damaged goes up substantially so our whole goal here is to be able to get finished product on the machine 
in on a consistent basis and then also teaching you how to maintain those tools so that way you can stay in front of any sort of defects to that profile that way we can reduce our labor and accentuating your uh, bottom line so on to the next step is going to be taking this tool and we're going to go ahead and put it in the machine and scan this piece so we can do the programming.